Now that we power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today I am here with more modular engines from the 1.0 Mega Update or the main release of Stormworks Build and Rescue here. You guys might think one cylinder in a modular engine? That's kind of weak, you think, Storm? And I'd say, yeah, that's kind of weak, but you haven't seen what one cylinder for me is. As you can see, I have my one cylinder right here, ready to go to be put into a modular engine. What do you guys think of my one cylinder here? You think it'll pack a punch to get me down the road? In all reality, this is actually one cylinder for a modular engine. And for scale, here is my character next to the gigantic one cylinder that I made. All right. And I've actually created a few different vehicles today using just one cylinder in a car. Now in real life where you would find one cylinder engines would be on something like this tractor, a pushable tractor. Usually it has only one cylinder. Sometimes you can get motorcycles that have one cylinder, although they aren't very common because they are quite underpowered. There are a couple other engines out in the world that are one cylinder, but usually developers and engineers are putting in more than one cylinder just because the sheer lack of power that one cylinder gives you and you can see exactly why when I bring out the two cars I built today. So here is the engine in question, the one cylinder engine, which sounds pretty good. I know I'm talking over it, but hold on. Just blast that sound for you guys. Rip anyone's eardrums that ever wanted to hear stuff in Stormworks. I'll turn that back down to like 2%. But as you can see, it works pretty well. It'll get a little propeller going. But let's see what it can do in a car for us. So I've turned up the in-game volume for Stormworks. So I can show you engine stalling in E minor here. Which basically is just this tiny little economy engine trying to go forward if we jump out here real quick you can see how small and how little amount of space this engine actually takes up i do apologize that it is gonna constantly keep skipping until i give it a lot of power here but as you can see we're hitting a whopping oh there's, there's a mile an hour still in first gear and i haven't changed much of anything on this car for this test here i do have a second version i'm going to show in a minute that actually shows me trying to make the one cylinder engine work in my economy car. You know, that would actually move faster than a snail or a turtle on the road. But uh, that'll be a minute or two. Let's just see the, the grunt in this little engine. As you can see, for some reason, it's not going up a gear. I guess I broke that or something. I thought it switched gears. Maybe it kept conking out when it switched gears, so I just turned it off. Getting 10,000 RP. It. Oh! Okay, now we're in gear 4. And it's stalling itself. So, I guess I didn't connect up something correctly, or... I'm not even sure anymore. But that was an odd problem there. But as you can tell, it's not getting very good MPG because it's running at a super high speed. We're not going much of anywhere with this car. And there's just problems switching gears. And that is because they have a high gear ratio right now. Here's the version, my SRG E7, where I actually tried to kind of work with the one cylinder modular engine to get it to kind of work with the gears and everything. And it's not doing anything yet. I'm going to put it in manual shifting so I can shift it up so we get something actually working today. Even still, it's not strong enough to go into second gear anymore. You, you can see my dilemma here. Come on, gain some power, some traction, some something. I mean, this version, I decreased the gear ratios and everything, so it has a chance to get into second gear. Eventually, when the engine catches up, I believe we can roll in second gear with a little bit more efficiency, but third, fourth gear, we're just killing the engine at that point. So, it just seems like this car was too heavy, and I would have had to switch up so much logic to get it to remotely work. So that's why I built what I'm going to show you in a second. So this is my little E7 hatchback. It's got all those different problems and some decent weight to it. But, for my one cylinder engine to actually work in a car, I pulled out all the stops from probably months ago now with this little number here. 
my little smart car. And not only did I want to find a small car design, there was actually a build challenge that somebody put on my Discord that I was kind of just messing around with, and this car actually fits within the size of it. And you may be thinking, Storm, why do you want to build a little slow smart car? Efficiency. First off, if we get rid of this thing over here, hold on, let me remember my buttons. I guess we can just move, cut it, and then clear contents. If we get rid of that thing, 446 for mass. The thing weighs almost nothing. Well, if almost nothing is 446 mass. Anyway, we won't get into weighing almost nothing. This little car, it's got some peppiness with that one cylinder engine in it. Believe, or, believe it or not, it even has a reverse gear and a second gear can get up to sometimes. But I've also put in my MPG calculator just to show you guys how efficient this thing actually is. And I will tell you it is a work in progress vehicle so there are a few bugs with the clutch system right now. My biggest problem being that since it's a one cylinder it has no power to activate the clutch. So I have to slowly activate the clutch as it starts but I haven't found fine-tuned those numbers yet. So it'll jitter up and down in RPS but I mean, we're going almost twice the speed of my little E7 back there, and it looks pretty good doing it. I'm mean, gonna do have to fix up at least the back windows or something on this. Uh, as you can see, we're getting a whopping 80 MPG. That's actually going to go up as we're driving it. And you might also think, because this little thing has a lawnmower engine, it's not gonna be able to reach highway speeds, but that's where you're wrong. We can actually hit a top speed of 65 miles an hour. And the only reason we can actually do that right now in Stormworks is because there's no RPS limiter on the modular engine. So there's no way to tell it to max out at around 7 or 10. So I can actually get this thing to be more efficient if there was a way to cap the RPS on a modular engine. And I do hope the developers put that in in whenever they're going to update it next. Hopefully in the next week's update. So, But as you can see, we're already almost up to 40 miles an hour. I know it's going like a snail, but it's getting there. It's not having much of any trouble other than that little clutch problem at the beginning. And as you can see, it currently is the most efficient vehicle in Stormworks now easily beating out the SRG E7 where I put 50, 60, 70 hours into testing and building, building that over again to make an efficient car. All for it to be trumped by the simple modular engines and one baby cylinder sitting in a smart car. I don't know if I'm mad about it or happy that I broke my own record, but... This thing definitely is going to get some pretty good MPG. And, I mean, you are going to look a little bit foolish going around town. And you can also make the argument that if I had set up the same exact engine in this car here, it might be more fuel efficient, but I'll, I'll, give, I'll let you guys in on a little secret here. I actually did try that once where I had the engine sitting where the passenger seat is right now, and the smart car at best could get uh, 1.8 mpg it was just because you only have two gears in here and we are going to start dropping fuel economy because we are hitting around our top speed now it's just because the engine is now hitting higher and higher oh i've lost it oh no okay so i do need to stiffen up the suspension just a little bit because at those high highway speeds it does get away from you i kind of slammed it to make it look a bit better because when the suspension is standing up it looks a lot worse so i thought it looked a lot better but even taking it at that 65 highway speed we still got two mpg that's way better and at some points we can easily double the srg e7's mpg there with what 2.8 if you keep it at around 55 miles an hour and if they don't put a limiter on the modular engines, I guess I'm going to have to do that with code somehow. Or logic per se. Not exactly code, so I guess we'll see in the future if they do implement that in or not. But you guys want to see me make a video on this? See if I can get it 
even more efficient. Because we're almost reaching 3 MPG. I feel like if we made a two-cylinder engine, it might be more fuel efficient. Because when I figured out the SRG, the E7 at the end, when I did a 5 engine, a 5 RPS engine, it was less efficient because there was less power to get it going. So it burned a little bit more fuel getting it down the road. So I'm thinking I could squeeze up to a 3 cylinder in my smart car. So that could easily crush the fuel economy of this little vehicle here. So look out for that video in the future. Well, if you guys do want me to do it. If not, I might just do it on my own anyways. Because I enjoy challenging myself to get a decently efficient vehicle. Because still, 2 MPG in real life is horrible. It's like you're flooring it in a huge pickup truck with a V8 in the front end. That was not my best driving. And you can tell it's a work in progress because I did also put a reverse in here when you hold down S. <laughs> okay, I, I laughed because usually when I hold down S after stopping, it'll either A, stall the engine, B, go forwards again, or C, move backwards. And it only moves backwards like one out of every ten times or something, so I'm very surprised it actually happened in the video, but... I might actually drop this on the workshop if you guys do want to see that as well. I'll leave a link down in that description down below. But of course, if you guys did like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks and more of my content. But I've been great. Goodbye. So people need me and I need to go.